Lots is changing in the town of Upperburg. Sheriff Rusty Trusty has his hands full. Some scoundrels have been terrorizing the nearby towns, and they could be headed to Whopperburg next. If that weren't enough, the new train came to town, bringing Ike Graham with it. But he's not a peddler anymore. He's a preacher now. The only problem is, they don't have a church. Meanwhile, Miss Rose Honeycutt has moved to town. She's getting the bank and the town saloon off to a brand new start. Wild Bill Hiccup win her affections. Will the people raise enough money for the church before Christmas? And most importantly, will the sheriff catch those low-down, dirty, rotten scoundrels before they steal everything in sight? Don't miss a minute of today's episode. Starring Sheriff Rusty Trusty, Preacher Ike Graham, Josie Jones, Miss Rose Honeycutt, with Ma Jones, Wild Bill Hiccup, Butch Taffety and the Square Dance Kid, and some low-down, dirty, rotten scoundrels in a very scoundrel's Christmas. No, I ain't caught them. Yet. Besides, you're making a big fuss for nothing. They're probably way up in them hills by now. Help! Help! Scoundrels. <laughs> Miss Rose, Miss Rose, calm down. Tell me what happened. Yeah, oh, include all the scary part. Uh, well, I was alone and I was counting up last night's deposits when three men with guns came in. What happened next? Oh, yeah. Ooh, did they start shooting? How'd you manage to dodge their bullets? No, no, there wasn't any gunfire. They just, they pointed their guns and said, give me all the money, and so I did. Did you get a good look at them? No, not really. Uh, their faces were covered. See, um, they were yay high. And uh, they went, there were three of them, and they went that way. No, no, they went that way. Could have covered a lot of ground by now. I need a horse. <gasps> I'm on it. Hey kids, we got Square Dance here and Butch Tappity. We're gonna have some fun today with some jokes. Are you ready for one? What did Frosty call his cow? I have no idea what Frosty called his cow. Eskimo! <laughs> Hold on, hold on, I got one, I got one, I got one. Okay. Where does no man go to dance? I have no clue. They go to the snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Forest, way up in the North Country. What is that? Well, you said you wanted a horse. That ain't a horse. That ain't even half a one. Well, hush now, you'll hurt its tiny little feelings. That's the tiniest horse I've ever seen. Yeah. I said hush now, you'll hurt its feelings. Josie Jones, you never cease to amaze me. Well, do you want it or not? Here you go, take this. Hey there, boy. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, giddy up, out yonder. <laughs> Sha. What, what's his name again? Goliath, like the giant in the Bible. Goliath. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, come on, Goliath. Let's go catch us some scoundrels. <laughs> no, not this way. We're going, we're going that way, Goliath. All right, all right, all right. Well, okay. Come on. Thanks for nothing, Josie. <gasps> well, good luck to you, too.
Glory to the newborn King. Yeah. You may be seated. Uh, well, it's been quite a week. Now, as you might have heard, the Whopperberg Bank has been robbed, and from the looks of it, it looks like them wild scoundrels are behind it. Now, I, I know many of you might have had money in the bank, and, and I know it's easy to feel upset or even afraid about the future. Well, at least the church's money wasn't in the bank. You've got it, right? Actually, folks, as the town's banker and the church's treasurer, I deposited the money in the bank last week, and well, it's gone too. Well, swallow a fly. There ain't no way we can raise enough money for a new church by Christmas now. Now, 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 before you get upset, let's remember, it's all God's anyway, right? So, if it's all His, we can trust that He has more for us than, than we can see from here. Now, I know, I know that if, it might feel like a time to hold back, but actually, really, now is the perfect time to give. I'm not sure I'm following what you're saying, Preacher Graham. We don't have much to give anymore. Well, generosity is about how much we love, not how much we give. When we give, God is looking at our hearts. He's not looking at the dollar amount. If we believe all the money that we have is from God and He will provide more in the future, well, it's not hard to keep giving. <laughs> even when the hard times come. When we know what we have is God's, it's easy to give cheerfully. We know how much God loves us. Well, giving is a way to show God love back. All right, we can do this. Even though the bank's been robbed, even though we don't have much, we can still give something. Come on, pass that basket around. Let's everybody give. Woo! Go on. <laughs> now, you, you see, God doesn't need our money. Well, he ain't poor. Everything already belongs to him. When we give offerings to God, we are showing him that, that he has our hearts. I don't believe it. We have more here in this offering than the band had stole to begin with. We have more! Oh, thank you, Lord. See, God provides. Let's pray. Yeah. Well, did you get a load of that? I hear those scoundrels stole a lot of money from a lot of people. They even got the church's money. Oh, heavens. But the fine folks of Whopperburg came through at church today. They gave an offering and ended up with even more than they had before. Goodness sakes. Don't you just love how God works? When we give money to God, we're showing God that we love Him more than money or the stuff we can buy with money. It's one of the ways we can worship Him by giving through our offerings at church. And worship is all about the heart. Now, I'm going to say a verse, show you some motions, then you're going to repeat after me. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. You're going to say, You! Decide. You're going to look like you're thinking, hmm, in your heart. And we're going to do that real fast. Like, you must decide, in your heart. How much to give? You're going to hold your hands out. And then we're going to say, for God loves, up to God with a little heart. Oh, that's so sweet. A person who gives fearfully, then you're just going to make a big old smile. I want to see those big old teeth, okay? Okay, here we go. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. You must decide in your heart how much to give. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. You guys are so good at that. So, yo, get on out there and you just start giving and be cheerful about it, you hear? After all, giving is a way to love God back. Oh, hey, Josie, where's my wheelchair? I want to do some break dancing. Let's find it. Come on, come on, help me. 
This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let us blow up all the pages that this show gone off. Let us world explode from this video into your life. One day, Jesus was teaching in the temple, and his disciples were there with him. Jesus noticed people coming to put their offering in the collection box. Now, in those days, there were some rich people living in Jerusalem. Before they gave to God, these people usually spent their money on whatever they wanted, like rich food. Mmm. Or fancy jewels. Ah. Or big houses. Oh, yeah. You get the idea. And after they had everything they wanted, they gave an offering to God out of whatever was left over. They loved to go to the temple when they knew a lot of people would be there. That way, lots of people would talk about it. Look, see how much money he's putting in the offering? Wow, he's generous. But Jesus wasn't impressed. Huh? What? What do you mean? You see, Jesus knew those people had brought God their leftovers. The money that was left after they bought everything they wanted. They had not given up a single thing. Yeah? So what? We gave a lot of money. Just then, a woman arrived. Her husband had died and she was a widow. She didn't want attention. She didn't have very much money to give. She walked to the box, put in all the money she had, just two small coins and walked away. Did you see that? What a cheapskate. She just gave two cents! When Jesus saw what the woman had done, he turned to his disciples and said, The truth is, this poor widow gave more to the collection than all of these others put together. All the others gave what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. This widow woman was happy to give. She gave all she had because she loved God. Good day, Miss Rose. Oh. Oh. Wow, Bill, you scared me. I didn't see you there. <laughs> you know, I been wild all, always, <laughs> you know. Well, ain't it great how they raised money for the church like they did? It is great. Maybe we can still raise enough money for a new church by Christmas. Yeah, maybe so. Well, here, it's for you. I picked it myself. It's almost as pretty as you are. <laughs> almost. Uh, thank you, Bill. It's lovely. You know, I don't have a lot of money right now, but when I do, I'm gonna buy some land and put a house on it. A house just big enough for two. Maybe even some little ones. What do you think about that? You know, I think it's time I go check back on the bank. Good day, Miss Rose. Back. Oh, did you get them? How hard was it to find them? That's just it. Oh, I didn't find them. I thought I was tracking them up in the hill country and turned out just to be a bunch of traveling gypsies. Mm. 
Well, I'm sorry. But I know you'll get them. I'm just sure of it. Well, I'm glad you're sure. It's one of us. Sure? Yes. Where's the horse? Hmm. You mean Goliath? Oh, he's sleeping on a dandelion out in the barn. Probably sleep for days. Maybe, Maybe I will too. Sheriff! There's been another robbery, this time at the leather store. All the boots are missing. Scamp! I got my boot! Come on, Goliath! Will the citizens of Wubberberg continue to trust and obey God with their money, even when it's hard? Will Sheriff Rusty Trusty stop the scoundrels before they strike again? Tune in next time for a very scoundrel's Christmas.